In aviation, progress often comes in small, careful steps. A percentage point of fuel savings here, a few extra seats of capacity there, and a constant race to make every aircraft just a little quieter, a little lighter, a little more efficient. But every so often, something comes along that feels less like a step and more like a leap. The CFM rise is one of those leaps. On paper, it promises to reshape the very foundation of commercial aviation. And in a world facing rising fuel costs, mounting environmental pressure, and an industry desperate to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, RISE doesn't just look like an exciting new engine. It looks like a lifeline. But behind the bold claims and futuristic renderings lies a far more complicated reality. Because while the RISE is a project decades in the making, questions are already surfacing. Can it really deliver on its promise? Or are we watching history quietly repeat itself? To answer that, we need to go back to basics. RISE stands for Revolutionary Innovation for Sustainable Engines. The name itself reflects the ambition. At its core, RISE is what engineers call an open fan engine, sometimes nicknamed a prop fan or unducted fan. Unlike the turbofan engines that dominate every commercial jetliner today, the open fan strips away the smooth outer nacelle, the large circular casing that surrounds the fan at the front of an engine. By removing that casing, you save weight, you free the fan to grow larger, and you allow air to move with less drag. The result is a dramatic jump in efficiency. How dramatic? CFM claims RISE could achieve 20-25% to better fuel burn compared to the most advanced engines flying today. To put that in perspective, the last great leap in engine technology from the legendary CFM-56 to its successor, the Leap engine, only delivered around a 15-20% to 20 gain. And that was enough to reshape the economics of modern single-aisle aircraft. For airlines that fight tooth and nail over single-digit percentages in efficiency, a jump of 20% isn't just incremental. It's revolutionary. But as bold as the rise may sound, the idea of an open fan is not new. In fact, it has a long and troubled history. Back in the 1970s and 80s, the aviation industry faced another crisis. Oil shocks that sent fuel prices soaring. Engineers at General Electric, Pratt & Whitney, and others began to imagine radical new solutions. The prop fan was born in that era. Early demonstrators with their futuristic scimitar-shaped blades promised huge efficiency gains. The technology seemed on the verge of a breakthrough, but reality hit hard. The gearboxes of the era simply weren't T reliable enough to handle the loads required to spin such large fans at slower, efficient speeds. The blades themselves had to be both feather light and immensely strong, a balance that material science at the time couldn't quite achieve. And perhaps most damning of all, those engines were loud far too loud for passengers or airports to tolerate. By the early 1990s, the dream of an open fan faded, shelved as a too-soon experiment. Fast forward to today, and the picture looks very different. Technology has caught up with ambition. Gearboxes, once the Achilles heel of the design, are now proven. Pratt & Whitney AS geared turbofan Already powering aircraft like the Airbus A220 and A320neo has shown that modern gear systems can survive the stress of high-bypass engines in commercial service. Materials Science 2 has leapt forward. Carbon fiber composites allow engineers to build fan blades that are both stronger and lighter than anything possible in the 1980s, and, perhaps most importantly, Advanced computer modeling and aerodynamic design have found ways to tame the noise problem. Instead of using counter-rotating fans, which created unbearable acoustic signatures in earlier designs, RISE uses a single large fan, paired with stationary blades behind it to straighten airflow. This promises quieter performance while retaining efficiency. On paper, the RISE finally looks like it could succeed where its predecessors failed. And CFM isn't dabbling here. They're all in. More than 2,000 engineers are already dedicated to the program. Thousands of hours of testing have been completed. 
leveraging technologies borrowed from other successful GE engines. The military F-110, which powers the F-16 fighter jet, and the GE Passport, used on Bombardier's global business jets. A full-scale ground demonstrator is expected soon, and Airbus has already agreed to take the next step, mounting the RISE engine on its A380 test aircraft for flight trials. The industry is watching closely, but in aviation, every bold claim invites bold skepticism. And here is where competitors, especially Pratt & Whitney, are pushing back. From their perspective, the RISE might look good in theory, but in practice, it could introduce trade-offs too big to ignore. First, there's the issue of safety and structure. Without a nacelle to contain a blade, an open fan engine faces unique risks in a so-called blade-out event. That's when a fan blade detaches at high speed. With a traditional turbofan, the nacelle is designed to contain it. With an open fan, the debris could strike the fuselage or wings. To compensate, future aircraft might need stronger, heavier structures, eating into the very efficiency gains the engine promises. Then there's the challenge of integration. These fans are huge. To make room, wings may need to be redesigned, possibly into radical gull wing shapes, bent upward to clear the massive diameter of the engines. That adds weight, complexity, and cost. And finally, the open fan creates disturbed airflow behind the spinning blades. This turbulence can wash over the wings and reduce their efficiency. Pratt and Whitney argues that when you add up all these penalties, the heavier wings, the reinforced fuselage, the aerodynamic compromises, you might end up with an aircraft that delivers little to no advantage over a more advanced next-generation turbofan. CFM, unsurprisingly, disagrees. They claim the raw efficiency of RISE could reach 30%. Even if integration costs eat away at part of that, the net gain for airlines could still be around 20%. And in an industry where a few percentage points can determine billions in operating costs, 20% is worth fighting for. But ultimately, the decision won't rest with the engine makers. It will rest with the aircraft manufacturers, Boeing and Airbus. Here, the story gets political. Boeing has quietly sent out requests for information for a possible 737 replacement program. Interestingly, their requests emphasized advanced ducted engines, traditional turbofans, not open fans. That may signal that Boeing's engineers are wary of the risks. Airbus, on the other hand, has been far more open to the rise. They've partnered with CFM in European test facilities, sharing resources and knowledge. Airbus leadership under Christian Scherer, the former CEO of Airbus Commercial Aircraft, leaned strongly toward embracing open fan technology. But leadership changes matter. Scherer has since retired, and his successor, Lars Wagner, comes from MTU Aero Engines, a long-standing partner of Pratt and Whitney. Wagner's views on RISE seem more cautious, aligning more closely with Pratt's skepticism. That shift could change the trajectory of the program. So where does this leave us? Right now, the CFM RISE program is alive, funded, and moving forward. Airbus remains committed to testing, and Boeing, while cautious, hasn't entirely shut the door. And in a twist of irony, even Pratt & Whitney themselves are studying small-scale open fan concepts, a hedge against the possibility that RISE succeeds and they risk being left behind. But in aviation, success isn't determined solely by engineering. Timing matters, regulatory environments matter, passenger acceptance matters, and, above all, economics matters. If oil prices rise, if governments impose stricter emissions rules, if airlines are pressured to cut carbon footprints faster, then the gamble of rise looks far more attractive. But if fuel prices remain stable and regulations move slowly, the risk of betting a new aircraft on unproven technology might outweigh the potential rewards. History offers a cautionary tale. In the 1980s, the open fan was hailed as the future. Artists' rendering showed airliners of tomorrow with futuristic scimitar blades. The promise was bold, but the execution faltered.
the industry wasn't ready. Today, the world is different. Technology is stronger, computing power is unmatched, and climate urgency is higher than ever. But the same question lingers. Is the industry ready to take the leap? In the end, the rise may stand as the most ambitious bet in modern aviation. If it works, it could define the next half-century of flight, just as the high-bypass turbofan defined the last. It could slash emissions, cut costs, and show that aviation is capable of radical reinvention. But if it fails, it could join the long list of technologies that were just a little too far ahead of their time. So, will the rise truly rise? Or will it fall, just as its predecessors did, remembered as a dream too bold for its era? For now, the engines are being built, the tests are being prepared, and the world is watching. And in aviation, the future has a way of arriving faster than we expect.